Hey guys, guess what? We have got more Proline tires up for grabs. So write me a comment why you need these tires. You got new rigs, you're building old rigs, you're changing old rigs, your tires are tired, or you just need to upgrade your tires. Write me a comment, guys. The guys who write me a comment, I will put you guys in the final draw and let's see who wins the final prize. Now let's get back into today's video. Hey guys, on this week's show, we're going to be talking about the cage that I built for the little YJ Jeep. So panning over to here, we've got two cages, guys. One is the original and one is the one that I built. But the one that I built has got a little trick up its sleeve. So let me quickly show you and explain to you what I did here. This is a early, early YJ Jeep because it has this uh, down bar coming here where the later ones, they had like that family cage. It came kind of from this area, it came down and then joined up to that base plate. So this is the stock, the stock bar and this is the stock bar. And these are the stock pillar bars. So what I did is I put a front tie-in in and a back tie-in in. So the front tie-in exists of this spreader bar that joins onto the pillar bars. I then put a kink into it over here on the sides because the center section here has a kink as well. The, the stock bar has a center kink to make it stronger. So if the Jeep ever rolls over, it's difficult or it's more difficult to push that, push that past and it's a little bit stronger. So I used that technique as well on the spreader bar and also on these bars going across. They also have a slight kink in it. It also, these, the, the center bars, it gives it a nicer line looking from the outside of the car. Just using these, the car looks pretty plain, looks pretty straight, you know, because everything is kind of just square and straight. If you put the roof on it, the fiberglass roof, it has a little bit of a curve. So I'm actually following the curve of the roof with these uh, spreader bars as well. But obviously the kinks are mainly there to add to the strength of the cage. So when I bought this Jeep, it actually was missing this bar. So I was looking for a original stock, but while I was actually doing that, I kind of had the idea that I could actually use my friend's tube bender, buy some tubing and maybe make a cage that I saw on the internet that I found quite cool. And I kind of copied, I think I copied one of the poison spider cages. Uh, I think that poison spider cage has a down tube at the front here as well, which this one is missing. This is kind of like, you know, you have um, the original and you tie in the front section, but the back se section didn't have seat belts. I kind of wanted to have seat belts, although you see on the Jeep, my kids are tough and they don't really need a cage at all. So I thought seat belts might be a nice idea for if they if we are on the road <laughs> that they can put their seat belts on. So that's why I built the back tie-in as well to actually support the seat belt sections. So once you um, get a mulligation for a cage, they want to check those things. Now the nice thing about Having the original cage, which is a good, which is good enough, strong enough cage to start with, is your seatbelt points are original. So you don't have to mess around with that. And Roadworthy also doesn't really ask questions. Now, if you living in other countries, they might not even ask questions, but here they do. So once I cut my tube and I used my friend's tube bender, I kind of just tacked it in place, tacked everything in place and then checked if the roof still fits. So I have about one finger that I can actually run my hands along the bar without actually catching them. And that is quite important because you don't want that irritating tick 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 squeaking noise when you're going down the road or going down the trail. <laughs> 
Now coming to the back tie-in. So what we did here, we took this bar and we kind of shaped it to the inner part of the roof. So it has a kink here, number one, to give it a bit more strength and safety. It comes across and goes over here. It is kind of in line with the front pillar bar. It just runs in a straight line with the front pillar bar if you look at the side of a car. Then we put in these two spreader bars also with a kink but giving it that line that kind of follows the original fiberglass roof. Then we have the down pillar and another pillar to strengthen it because we do not have the original pillar that comes down from the side. And those two then just join up to the actual base plate. So the first step that you would do is install your stock cage in your Jeep. Tie it down properly that you don't have movement because when you're welding and you're putting heat into the metal it'll start to go into a direction that you don't want to have and you have a lot of tension on the tubes and the bars. So the first step is to install the spreader bar. The spreader bar has a space here that you can actually get to your sun visors and pull them down so that they are not in the way of the sun visor. The tube is not in the way of the sun visor. Now the kink is here for strength. Measure it out, tack weld it into place, put the spreader bars in the center, then put your roof on to make sure that you're not going to have irritating squeaks. Then once you've kind of tacked this in place and, you, and you're happy with it, then you go into the back tie-in. The back tie-in is a little bit more work because you kind of have to get that back bar to fit perfectly. The back bar doesn't just, this is not just straight, there's actually a kink in here. So on both sides we have a kink and we have a kink on these center sections as well. So first we, we bent these outer circumferences and then we put the kink in. So this was obviously passing the cage. And then we put the kink in and it's obviously in a straight line to the pillar bar in the front. So and once you have everything tacked in place Put your roof back on, make sure that you have enough space in between the roof and the tubes. And then once you're done with that, you can weld it together. The way we did it, we took the seats out and the carpets out, protected the car and then welded everything together. In that time, we also fitted the car with AstroTurf instead of carpets which is kind of a cool thing that I thought we can do. <laughs> but if you don't do that, I started doing one weld and the carpets were still in and I messed the carpets up completely. So it's a good idea to take everything out of the car, protect the paint on the outside and then start welding. So this build, it's actually not a big build. It doesn't take that long. I think we spent about four to five days on it, uh, on and off obviously, uh, with work getting in between. <laughs> but to get it all welded and to paint it was about four days. Obviously one day I'm going to get a guy who can weld better than me and just perfect these booger welds that I put on here. <laughs> so guys, this is a nice project to do. It is a replica of this poison spider in my head because that was the best cage that I found on the internet and I like their products a lot. I don't have the money for that kind of stuff but this is the next best thing and with this method you're also saving yourself a whole lot on the side so guys don't forget we have the tire giveaway coming up end of december the pro line crawler tires so subscribe to the channel write me a comment what rigs you're building and we shall see who wins the final prize so guys that's it for me this week thanks for watching see you next time bye